The Flash might be all about speed, forces, and multiverses, but did you know that the cast members often have to think on their feet as well? As it turns out, the Speedster show has its fair share of improvised and even deleted scenes that just make it so much better. And we collected all the awesome ones, right here in one place for you. Hi, I'm Dylan. Quick, let's hop onto the cosmic treadmill. Iris loves Barry, right? Well, that doesn't mean she has eyes only for him. After all, she's allowed to look at the menu, but she can't order from it. Or can she? On the Flash episode of the Invasion crossover, Iris just said what everyone else was thinking at the moment. Uh, Barry, so Oliver Queen is the Green Arrow? Yeah. Oh my god, I just got so much hotter. Candace Patton confirmed on her Twitter account that the line wasn't in the original script and it was improv on her part, though she added that she couldn't take all the credit for it. Funny enough, this scene actually became something of a foreshadowing for an Elseworlds story where Oliver and Iris are actually an item in that universe. <laughs> Even Ollie knows this is just wrong, and you can't blame Barry for being a little mad that Iris is crushing on his friend. In fact, his reaction is priceless. Oh my god. But speaking of Mr. and Mrs. Allen, it's pretty evident that they've shared the bulk of the screen time on the Flash TV show. Yet there's one fantastic and hilarious deleted scene from season four which was cut for some unknown reason. It all starts with Ralph, naturally. Netflix, engage. Panic mode. No. Engage. no, 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 stop. Activate. Stop alerting. Of course, the two lovebirds were always going to return if their help was needed, but they weren't too impressed to find out it was just because Ralph hit the wrong button. I am supposed to be on a bitch where it's warm, having drinks with tiny, tiny little umbrellas in them. <laughs> While Iris's reaction is absolutely everything here, Barry takes the cake with his comment that makes you think of the speed force a little differently than before. You know how hard it is to run flip flops. Honestly, Barry, these are the types of things that no fan has ever thought of. To all sand powered foes, please take note Barry's biggest weakness is the beach. Love is certainly no weakness, though, and you can never doubt Iris's total devotion to Barry, even when she's been confronted with the reality that he might not exist in the future. Imagine how brutal that must feel, to know that your loved one won't be around and when they'll pass. In a deleted scene from season six, Iris shares this heartbreaking reality with her father. This article is supposed to be about what happens the day after tomorrow, but all I keep thinking about is what's gonna happen the morning after. You feel your heart sink to the pit of your stomach as Iris recalls all the special things that Barry does for her on a daily basis. And she's struggling saying goodbye to him, especially with the when and how. Eventually, she just breaks down. I'm practicing how to say goodbye to him and... I don't know, it just makes me doubt everything. It's an emotionally charged scene that hits you right in the feels, and you can't help but share her pain. For the most part, Joe just listens to what his daughter has to say, but he couldn't resist the opportunity for a joe to take place. But I need you to write this as if he always lives. Seriously, does Joe have some sort of handbook or something that he refers to when he needs to impart advice? Because he always knows what to say and when. You doing okay? I'm feeling great, yeah. Phew! Now on to something a little more lighthearted, but also the most epic and insane scene in DC TV history. Yep, it's the moment when the multiverses collided and Ezra Miller's Barry met Grant Gustin's. While it was one of the shocking reveals in the Arrowverse, a lot of work took place behind the scenes to make sure it came together. A script was pieced together rather quickly, but the two stars actually improvised a lot of their dialogue at the end of the day. Specifically, this important line. I'm also the Flash. You're also the what? The Flash? Flash? So why is it such a big deal, you might be asking? Well, Ezra's Barry was never named The Flash in the movies. This is the first time that he's learning about the name. It's creating a whole new origin story for that part of the DC multiverse. Plus, it's cool to see that it was Grant who actually gave Ezra the iconic name here. Also, you gotta love the exchange between them as they complement each other's outfit. It seems like and comfy. Yours is pretty cool. Smooth. Seems safe. It's and breathable. It's literally everything that fans have been saying about them for years. Honestly, the upcoming Flash movie should just be a buddy cop comedy featuring both Grant and Ezra talking the whole time. That's all we need in life. <laughs>
But you know, the seeds of the multiverse were already planted way back in season one of the show. In fact, there's a deleted scene where Barry tells Joe about a certain man, or should we say, Man of Steel. Joe, there were reports there of a man who could bend steel with his bare hand. The best part is, it doesn't stop there, as another Justice Leaguer is jokingly referenced by Joe. Yeah, and last month you disappeared to Amnesty Bay to investigate a story about a man who could talk to fish. Interestingly, at this point in The Flash, the show wasn't allowed to mention DC superheroes like Batman, Superman, or others by name. They were completely off the table for the Arrowverse, so the showrunners had to think of clever and innovative ways, like this, to do it. Now, six years later, there's a Superman show on the CW, and there's even an actor playing Batman and Batwoman. Just goes to show that The Flash was already, ahem, <clears throat> setting the pace for what was to come back in the day. While the multiverse might get us excited, you can't deny that there's already a scene stealer right beneath our noses on The Flash. If you're looking for quick quips and lightning fast responses, Cisco is the only person to turn to. Interestingly enough, he's also sharp in the improvisation department. One of his most quoted lines, especially on Pinterest, is from the episode where a villain used honeybee venom. I don't do bees, ain't nobody got time for bees. It wasn't just his improvised line that cracked everyone up here, but the expression on his face said it all. Cisco has become something of a go-to person for the most quotable lines on the show, so it's fun to try and figure out which parts were actually scripted and which were purely from the actor's genius mind. Couldn't shoot him if I wanted to. This is actually the Star Labs vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Improv or not, you tell us. But Carlos Valdez isn't just an actor with perfect comedic timing, he also possesses outstanding musical skills that he showed off in a deleted scene from season one. Seriously, just take a listen to Carlos strumming the guitar that gently weeps on his fingertips. Even his fellow actors look like they're having a good time listening to him and not just putting it on for the scene. Hey, considering Grant Gustin's time on Glee, maybe he and Carlos should start a band sometime. It's possible, especially if Barry messes up the timeline again. Though, he actually does come clean to his daughter Nora about his time traveling wrecking missions in a deleted scene. No. I created Flashpoint. It's an important moment between the two of them, since they're both guilty of zipping through the timelines and creating new alternate universes. However, Barry confirms to Nora that changing a timeline isn't everything you think it'll be, and there are consequences to their actions. You created a new reality. I lived in it. For a while. Until I realized what a mistake I'd made. While Nora doesn't always listen to her dad, this scene showed that he was prepared to give her the cold hard facts and even owning up to his own shortcomings. But why do you think it was cut from the final episode? Wow. All these improvised and deleted scenes just make you appreciate the show a little more. But tell us, do you have any favorites from what you've just seen? If you'd like to find out more about The Flash, be sure to check out our Funny Moments and Bloopers video. Thanks for watching!